Hello and welcome back to LynnHooperPsychic.com. Welcome back to our YouTube videos. Well, today it's blowing a hoolie out there. I've been blown from one end of the road to the other to get here, but we're here. That's an Irish saying, isn't it? <laughs> blowing a hoolie. Is it? <laughs> yeah, it I is. Know where it comes My from, Irish but... family is a sailor. <laughs> but it really is. It's um, wet and windy. It's a horrible day, but uh, we're all nice and snug and cosy in the shepherd's hut, ready to do our very interesting video for you. Um, today we're going to touch on a subject that I think we all have been associated with. Um, it's quite a delicate subject, it's life after death. And it's that feeling of loss when we lose somebody that's very close to us, being a parent or a very close friend, and that sort of loneliness of wondering where they go and what happens to them. Is there a life after death? Um, where do they go? And are they all right? It's always something that I worry about quite a bit, you know, where do they go? So Lynn, I'm hoping you're going to fulfil us on this particular subject and explain to us what actually happens when we die. Mm. Well, first of all, I say no one ever dies alone. That comes up a lot for me when I'm working. Um, people come say, oh my gosh, you know, I wasn't there for them at the end. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they passed alone and I'm really upset. And I say, well, they never pass alone. Um, it'll either be a loved one or an angel will be there at that moment of passing. No one ever passes alone. So never feel that, um, you know, if you had someone that was alone, they weren't. They were not alone. Um, and where do we go? We go into unconditional love. We go into a spiritual realm where there is no body, there's no need for the um, material possessions. It's, it's unnecessary. You are unlimited. Um, however, in the spiritual realms, they're created by vibration, by, by light. So you are drawn to the vibration that you're on now, that vibration of the soul, which is mm -hmm. without physical body you'll be attracted to the vibration of light in the physical realm. And in the physical realm, you will attract people of a similar vibration. This is unconditional love. So you will not come across people on a darker vibration. You will not be bumping into them like we do here, because this is a learning experience here. You will be bumping into people on a same soul vibration. So if you want, say you were with someone who had done something really quite difficult here though, that dark, dark soul if you like, they all go to a lower vibration. You can meet that person in your spirit if the lighter person chooses to move down to a low vibration. It can't go the other way around. Mm. So you're creating on those light levels the existence that you want in the spiritual plane but without a body, but you can create a body if you want to. But so everything is different. Do we actually meet our loved ones? You know, do we Absolutely. embrace them and see them as we remember them? Yes. They'll, they'll, they'll when you when you move into spirit what you have to forget is we aren't going to be looking at it as we are now in a physical body mm -hmm. when we pass and we move into the soul the actual energy we recognize each other instantly it's like hearing say we were all like c on a piano you'd hear that note you'd hear that tone it's like a soul recognition you recognize instantly the people that are at that same same vibration so i love one you know, like your family, say your father or mother that's passed, will be in that soul family. That soul family will mm -hmm. have one collective energy that you'll be drawn straight to, you'll know instantly, recognise them. And they will come in the form that you remember if your father um, passed, but he wants to be young and fit and happy again, you know, and strong. He'll show himself like that and you'll think, oh great, look at that. And you'll be straight, you know, to that, that happy energy because that's really how you are there's no there's no ill health in the spiritual realm there is none you are completely uh, fully able to to be however you want to create yourself really wonderful that's a lovely thought um and what about heaven and hell do you think there's such a thing mm -hmm. as heaven and hell well heaven and hell is a description for if you think about it here heaven and hell what's heaven to you what's hell here hell is when we're unhappy when we're miserable when we're in the dark same principle there's no devil and there's no uh, you know person there cracking a whip and trying to scare you know the the bejesus out of you that it's no different to the vibration we've got here some people are going to be in a lower darker vibration some people are going to be in a lighter vibration so the hell is the darker vibration if you like that people are drawn to you don't go to it okay it's going to be your soul vibration that you're drawn to at those light levels okay. what about um seeing god there are a lot of people that are religious that really do believe that they will see god when they pass over and to that will be the ultimate thing to be go back to their maker i believe they call it i'm not a religious person 
that would mean nothing to me. But do you think people do see God in, in their well, perception see, of God? See, now that's an interesting question. You don't believe in God. Mm. And if someone asks me, do I believe in God? I say, yes, but not perhaps in the way that you understand mm. God. Mm. I don't see God as a single deity, as a single man mm. sitting on the throne, you know, with his, you know all his serfs around him. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that's not how I see it. I see unconditional love and the higher vibration you go, people like guides, angels will come and walk in those higher vibrations. Um, Jesus was a man, to my understanding, with such advanced spiritual understanding that he came here with the ability to use that divine light. So if you were to go home in spirit, because we know Jesus as a man, we would be drawn to wanting to see him or be around him. Well, God is no different just without the body, if you like. It's the same spiritual light, that same spiritual power. But it's not one person. It's a, it's the divine consciousness, which is the absolute unconditional love for everyone without exception. Fascinating. What about, um, these are all questions that I think we all are thinking about sometime in our lives. Um, people that have near-death experiences that... Um, there's many articles written about this type of thing where they go, they explain going down a, a tunnel towards the light. Um, do you think that's something that, you know, why are they pulled back? Why do they have that experience that they are going down the, the path to dying and then they're pulled back into this life? Well, it's an experience that you want to experience. Um, you're talking about the tunnel. I remember mm. um, what was like a dream. It's like a lucid dream if you can control it. I remember asking about that tunnel, that dark tunnel, and they showed me that the darkness is actually the blacking out of the physical connection. Okay, so you, as you're leaving that darkness, of the, the physical behind that lower vibration, the light calls you, and that's what you're heading to, to allow you to let that physical connection go. So the tunnel is me merely the physical part that's holding us here. If you if you are really highly attuned, you don't necessarily see the tunnel, it's just pure light instantly. And then we're drawn to that light and then, you know, does, does the physical body, does it hurt when you, your no. soul leaves your physical body? Absolutely not, there's no, pain? it's the absolute opposite, it's a complete and utter relief. If, if you were to go home, as I call it, into spiritual vibration, the unconditional love is so powerful if we were to feel it here, we would not want to be here. No matter how much you love someone here, when you feel unconditional love, mm. you do not want to come back from it. You will not want to go come back here. So when people have near-death experiences, they'll be allowed through that tunnel, if you like, the physical part way, but they won't fully go into spirit because they will not want to come back. Mm. They will mm. not. It's the, the unconditional love is such a relief. It's such a healing power that you don't want to be anywhere else. And what about when people die suddenly, you know, in know, plane crashes or something like that, and the soul leaves the body with quite a jolt? Do you think that um, has an effect on the soul? Does it take a while for them to adjust, you know, compared to people that die over slow progress? My mind's just, just, just going to, to a few things here. So, um, before, what you have to remember is, obviously there's no time in spirit, mm. your guides, your loved ones, they know everything that's happening to you, okay, in your time. And this is something I explained to someone in a, in a reading once and perhaps several times since then. If there is a traumatic death where something really horrendous, like you're about to hit a train or fall mm -hmm. off a building, before the impact, you can be taken, or nine times out of ten, this is my experience, will be taken out of your body, the physical body, before the impact happens, okay, so that you actually don't have that horrific, horrific impact or horrific memory, spirit come and lift your soul unconditionally in love out before that happens, and that's an experience that I've been shown many times for people that want to understand trauma and how, you know, they can't get their heads around somebody that's had this horrific death, it isn't, they, they will get helped before the actual moment, mm. moment of that. I think that's the thing, it's the wanting the reassurance that if somebody has died in quite mm. a dramatic way that they haven't felt that or had a really bad experience and you know, obviously people that we love we wouldn't want them to go through some terrible ending in you know, any way. So that's kind of reassurance that that, that mm. wouldn't happen. Absolutely, so you can't die alone, 
it's not possible, yeah. which is, ties in with the fact that, you know, before these traumatic things happen, you still are alone, but you're also lifted before you feel that pain. Mm. So it takes away a little bit of the fear of dying, which mm. I think we all have that fear, because as much as we're talking about the subject now and the understanding of it, none of us really, really know, do we? No, no, no unless you know. seek and push to mm. ask, and then yeah. you can only share your own personal experience, which is what I do. You mm. have to find out for yourself to really know. Mm. And obviously spirit gives you this information as well, sort of the understanding that spirit will tell you what has happened, um, you know, to give you more of an understanding of life after that. Yeah. Absolutely. And the more you push, the more you seek, yeah. the more experiences you'll, you'll be shown. You know, when I was talking earlier about that tunnel, I was thinking back to the time when I did that, and I went, well, it was like a tunnel, but it wasn't quite a tunnel. I thought, and I suddenly was awake in this dream, and I thought, what on earth is happening here? I can see these people behind the desk, which is a bit odd. And then this woman looked up at me and said, what are you doing here? It's not your turn. What are you doing here? And there was mm. this panic, and the next minute I woke up. And I thought, what's that all about? I'd obviously travelled some way in astral mm. travel mm. to get where I was going, but I obviously wasn't allowed any further at that point. So, you know, there's so much more to understand and learn from by having these experiences. And what about, you know, we all sometimes have dreams, and in our dreams we feel that our loved ones come to us. Um, very real. I've had them before, and I've really... I, I remember once I had a amazing dream. I was um, going along this beach, walking along the beautiful sun and the sea lapping up against the shore. And in the distance, I could see this lady walking towards me. And as she got closer, I thought, that's my mum. What's she doing walking along the beach? It was so real. And she came up to me and she hugged me, embraced me. And it was so real. I could feel it. I thought, am I dreaming? Am I, is this reality? What's happening? And we talked and she said, how are you? And I said, oh, I'm fine. What are you doing now? We chatted like mother and daughter would and then she said uh, well I can't hang about I've got to go I'm busy and that's typical of my mum she was always busy doing something and off she went and I, I woke up thinking what did that happen I, it was so real to me I felt the embrace I felt everything now what happened there did I dream it was it in my subconscious was it something that I really wanted to happen or did it happen well, I, was I used to some of those things. You, yeah. you absolutely wanted it to happen. So there's probably a need in you to want to connect with your mum. Okay, you obviously at some level really missed your mum mm -hmm. and just wanted to know that she was okay. So your mum in spirit will know this. Okay. So she, the easiest connection spirit can ever make with us is when we're asleep. Because when we sit asleep, we turn off the conscious mind and we go straight home to spirit. We are automatically back in the spiritual mm -hmm. realm. Okay, so when you had to sleep and you really wanted to meet your mum, says, all oh, right, okay, uh, I want to come and see Jenny now. And that is the spiritual realm that you're in when you meet your mum on that beach. That is your mum completely at peace, happy, enjoying having that connection mm -hmm. with you. And mm -hmm. because you wanted it so much, you've kept or retained that meeting with her and brought it back with you to give you peace. So do you believe we can make that happen? And can there's people that would really, really love to have some contact with somebody that they love, mm. that, that they miss desperately. If they really consciously put that thought out there, you believe yeah. that they can make that There's happen. lots of ways. I mean, this is something we're going to do on the 22nd at Mercury Hall. Next month when we're doing our mm -hmm. um, talks, I'm doing the talk on um, dreams. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to talk about precognitive dreams. I'm going to be talking about lucid dreaming, which is, you know, where you kind of feel you've got control in somewhere in the dream, you're awake in the dream, which mm -hmm. is what you were talking about, mm -hmm. um, recurring dreams, there's lots of things you can have, some are the subconscious playing out on the fears that we've got, and some are absolute connections with the spirit world, and we can set our intention to meet loved ones, or have communication with our guides or soul family in spirit, if we start practicing writing down our intentions that I want to meet, there's, um, you need this herbal tea remedies you can help um, to take you into that sort of calmer state you can uh, write dream journals to help you remember if you wake up there's lots of ways of of um, preparing yourself if you like to start con connecting mm -hmm. with your loved ones in the mm -hmm. spiritual realm amazing what i find quite fascinating is i've often thought this myself is that if we are able to do all these amazing things as human beings how come we have to be taught it now and we haven't got this understanding you know, from birth, really? Why is it that we don't understand this? Oh, we have, living? but we forget. Why do we forget? Because the experience here, we're on the leading edge, as mm. uh, um, Esther would say, we're on the leading edge of spiritual understanding. And this here is an experience for us to 
connect with source, try and reconnect with it and bring it through into the physical. Mm -hmm. If we already knew it, it kind of might be a bit boring. We think, well, what are we doing here? You know, this is no lesson or experience to learn. Yeah. It's the searching, is the expansion, is the creation of more consciousness. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing is ultimately trying to wake up here to who we truly are mm -hmm. and then seeing what we can do with it here, mm -hmm. which is great fun. Mm -hmm. No, I think I can see where you're coming from. Do you think people are opening up spiritually more now? Oh, so much more. There's yeah. such a wave of energy. This year alone, I started with so many people, so many people waking up, I'm going to search, I want to know, and even I feel pushed mm -hmm. to start these videos because mm -hmm. there's so much people want to know about mm -hmm. that, you know, we all need to start sharing our experiences mm -hmm. about it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely people are becoming more consciously awake now and want to know. Mm -hmm. I agree. Definitely. Everyone you speak to has questions, spiritual questions oh. they want to ask, mm -hmm. um, you know, need answers to oh. desperately, don't they, okay. to continue their journey. So, I hope that's given you a taste of a little bit about life after death. Mm -hmm. As Lynn said, we, at our next um, event in Myrtle Hall, we are going to be talking about dreams and more touching on this sort of subject, yeah, which I think will be really interesting. And it's a very big subject, and um, we may even do another video going in depth a little bit more about it later on. So um, thank you very much for joining us, and thank you, Lynn, for answering some oh. quite deep questions about life after death. And uh, we'll uh, catch you next time mm -hmm. in our next video. So thanks guys for coming over and watching this channel. Um, we'd appreciate if you'd like to like this video and maybe subscribe to keep you updated. We certainly enjoyed um, making this video and we'll be certainly making some more for you on different to topics. So until the next time, stay strong, stay safe and positive and see you again. Bye.